Thanks for tuning in to more NFL talk on the Our Lads Football Network. Ryan Dunleavy joining me from the New York Post. We have a different strategy that we're going to be starting here as we enter week seven in the NFL. Ryan is going to be with me to recap uh, the games uh, in the NFL. We'll get Ryan's picks and my picks later on the week on a different show. But uh, this is a good opportunity to talk about right fresh what happened in the NFL each week, Ryan. And something I missed that we weren't able to do this season. We did a lot of last season. And so uh, better time than any to kind of get it started after that wild game last night. Yeah. Uh, obviously, what everybody's talking about right now is – Sean McDermott's decision to go for it there. I like the decision. I don't love the idea of just a quarterback sneak there. I'd like to see you roll out Josh Allen a little bit, but let's call it what it is. It should be, uh, it should be uh, the idea that Josh Allen slipped. I mean, if we Josh Allen didn't slip, then maybe he gets the first. Down. Yeah, yeah, but, but here's know, the Jeff thing. Is- here's the problem I have because I'm a, I completely agree with you. Here's the problem I have. Let's say Josh Allen doesn't slip and Josh Allen picks up the first down. Then okay. I'm assuming, I guess, they have one timeout left. They're going to call timeout. So Correct. now so you have 20 se- there's 10 you have seconds 20 left? Seconds. No, it's 20. They, I think it was 22 seconds when he got stopped. So say he gets it, you get up. Say there's 19, 18, 19 seconds left. Okay, let's say that. Let's see. Okay. Let me let me just uh, want to make sure exactly. Let's see. But the uh, the timing was on that because what I what I what I didn't like to happen. I have it in front of me. 20, 21 seconds. seconds. Okay. Twenty two. So Tennessee. So say he gets. Yeah. So say he gets it. Okay. By the time he get up all the pile, I'll say eighteen seconds left. Okay. So eighteen seconds left. No timeouts. Okay. So that's going to give them uh, potentially three plays, three shots at it. Uh, agreed. Correct. Three mm-hmm. shots at the square. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but again, no timeouts. So correct. So you can't have a holding penalty yes. or anything. Can't have any of that. You also can't get sacked. So correct. Tennessee knows everything you're going to run is going to be quick. Um, yep. which doesn't mean they can't. You're going to throw three fades essentially. Yeah, which doesn't mean they can't score because Tennessee doesn't have a great defense. So I get all that. But yeah, I I just think that when you're you're I think you just think it's too much of a of a risk. I don't think it's enough of a reward. I see where they're coming from, but I still feel I've got the better team and I maybe what he was concerned with was that nobody's stopping anybody in this game. So Correct. if they win the toss, they could probably score a touchdown on their drive. Derrick Henry is going to yeah. just pound it seven times into field goal range yeah. and you're going to lose. So that, that's yeah. why I think it's always so. important. We talk about this, why coaches need to understand th- th- what's going on in front of them. Not my pregame notes, my pregame strategy. No, what, what is going on right now? Because bills came into this game with two shutouts and this was not that defense. So the fact that he was aware enough of, Hey, we're just not stopping them. Definitely had to come into that that call, but I think we both agree the call itself. You know, I I just would rather have seen something else, and not not to say I'd I get like any. See, I'd like to see him on. The move. I'd like to see him on the route on the move with a run pass option around the edge. Yeah, I mean, you do put Josh Allen. You definitely don't run the ball with a running back. So it's Josh mm-hmm. Allen. What does he do best, and give him the opportunity to win the game for you. Uh, and it just didn't work out. But again, he slipped, and it happens. Uh, it is what it is. I means. saw a crazy stat, Greg, that the NFL leader in rushing yards is Derrick Henry. And then this, who would be second in the NFL in rushing yards? Derrick Henry after contact. He has more yards after contact than any other running back in the league has Total total. Yards, yes. It's crazy. Uh, that is unbelievable. That's unbelievable. And then and then uh, and then you see I, that three year stretch that they compared with uh with uh what's his name? The Hall of Famer from Denver. Tomlinson? Oh, Terrell yes. Davis. And it's such a good comparison because what it does is it says what it says is, oh, so all Derrick Henry has to do is play another couple of years and he's going to the Hall of Fame. That, yeah, it's a different game, but, though. But you and know Trump he's Davis going to the Hall of Fame. 
if he does that. Huh? You know if he finishes that three-year stretch, plays another couple of years, has another couple 1,500-yard season, is 1,300. He's going to the yeah. Hall of Fame. Probably. Yeah, yeah probably. I, I mean, my question is, what was Denver doing? In two, I mean, excuse me. What was Tennessee doing in 2016 and 2017? Yeah. When they had this guy and he was averaging like four and a half yards a carry and they only gave him the ball. 2016, 110 carries for 490 yards. Was he their number one back? 2017, 176 carries for 744 yards. What were you doing with him? I mean, I guess it's worked out because he didn't have a lot of mileage on him. He'd probably be finished by now if you beat him up in seven, 16 and 17. So I guess you saved his legs and prolonged his career. But what were you doing? Like, how did you not realize what you had in 16 and 17? Uh, I wonder who the coordinator was at that time. And did they have another running back on the team? The coordinator was, our, I think it was, oh, it was uh, Terry Robisky in 16. And it was Terry Robisky in 17 under Malarkey. All right, so there you go. You know. uh, but the other thing, because I agree, because those first two years, my feeling was, uh, that's just another Alabama bus running back. Correct. He's Correct. not doing anything. Yeah. He's a, when it went. He's Trent Richardson. When really, and, yeah. and, and what really it was was, if you just keep feeding him the football, he's going to get <laughs> better every game and throughout the course of the season. Correct. So, they didn't know what they had. Yeah. Yeah. They just felt, well, mm -hmm. he's not doing, he's not gaining enough yards on the initial attempts we're giving him. So I, I must mm -hmm. mean that he's just not really where we want him to be. No, just keep feeding him. Yeah. So, yeah. but hey, uh, that's been a asset uh, for Mike Vrabel and the new staff, mm -hmm. uh, of course, Arthur Smith uh, and, uh, and, and, and now the new coordinator there. So look, it's, uh, it's a huge win for Tennessee because it is by far the best that they have looked. I think that the other game that they looked this good was really the second half of the Seattle game. Other than that, uh, they have not looked very good this season. But what 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 they were doing in the game was was so the 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 the, the actual game plan of look what happens now when we when we fake the handoff to Derrick Henry and we get to throw the football mm -hmm. to AJ Brown. Or Julio Jones, yep. and that just opens everything up and makes you realize how dangerous this offense can be. Mm -hmm. So, absolutely, we'll see yep. if that continues. They lost to the Jets. Think about this: the Jets beat the Titans, who beat the Bills, who beat the Chiefs. Okay, so, so the Jets by lineage here have beat the two-time hey, defending there you AFC. Go. Yeah, that doesn't make me feel any better. By the way, okay, so, nice try. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how this, cause we've also said this the last few years and, and this is just a fact in the NFL, it's the same thing in a lot of sports, but definitely the NFL. And that is you don't really care necessarily what happens and how you're playing early. It matters how you're playing late. And the Tennessee Titans have more than enough time this season to get to, 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 to play. And maybe this is the game that sparks them where they could play like a Super Bowl team once we get into the playoffs. Because we know before mm -hmm. Monday night, they hadn't played anywhere near like that type of team. Boom. One game, mm -hmm. and maybe that's a start. So. Uh, then there was the other uh, primetime game on Sunday night, and that was the third of three overtime games this weekend with Pittsburgh uh, beating Seattle. And that was, uh, that, that was uh, uh, a pretty ugly game like in the it, that it figured was decided by a turnover in overtime uh mm -hmm. let me ask you this question because i didn't even I, I i missed the part of who won the toss i'm assuming seattle did in overtime that's how it worked seattle got the toss in overtime you remember yes okay yes is there a, is there a situation that you think that a head coach should kickoff now in overtime knowing that the weather. team needs a touchdown weather weather if it's like if it's a uh, snow rain can't move the ball like three three game yes otherwise no okay no so even if no another normal... team doesn't look like like pittsburgh offensively they weren't no. doing anything no. you're you're not going to take the chance that they're going to score a touchdown and you're not going to get the ball back 
Correct. Okay. No chance. Too much can happen. Your def- your corner can slip. Too much can happen. Okay. No. So uh, tough loss, obviously, for either team because now that puts Seattle at two and four, and it does look like with Russell Wilson out. Uh, you mentioned this in the beginning of the season, and we kind of talked about it. Even though we believe, all things considered, those four teams in the NFC West deserve to be playoff teams on paper if, if everything you know, was equal. The fact is, injuries happen, and that's usually the deciding factor. It's what happened to the Niners last year, and that's what's happening to Seattle this year, is that they're a playoff-caliber team, but injuries have happened, and when the season's over, they are more than likely going to be that team, and maybe San Francisco will also, but they will, also, they, will, they will definitely be that team that ends up on the outside, and will, it's not because they're not a playoff team. It's just they, they're the team that didn't have the, the injury luck this season so correct and in that division there's no margin for error uh they're especially relying on their quarterback more than most teams so uh yeah it's just what's gonna happen though they're a team that if russell wilson's healthy week 14 15 16 17 18 whatever they're gonna they'll probably fall short and you'll say you know what seattle's better than these two teams in the playoffs but too much ground to make up yeah taking a look at seattle's schedule they have any uh, cupcakes or not till Russell they've got no they got one cupcake that's the ja- Jags they're at home uh on Sunday against the Saints and to tell you the truth we don't know what the Saints can do from week to week so I'm not going to say they can't win that game at home that's the season right there if you can beat the Saints on Sunday this week you have Jacksonville after that before the bye and then you can put yourself back to four and four And now you salvage potentially, hey, you know, Russell Wilson, you know him. He'll come back early. Maybe he's back for the Green Bay game. Who knows? But they have to beat the Saints Mm -hmm. next week. Uh, For Pittsburgh, even though it was a a win, it wasn't like the win from the week prior. Again, as I mentioned against that Denver, in that Denver game, Roethlisberger looked awesome. This was the different type of Steeler team. Uh, But uh, it was the same Pittsburgh offense. They just didn't do a hell of a lot. And I still don't think that when all, when it all, look, maybe they squeak into the playoffs because they're well coached. And so, and they, they have Watt, TJ Watt on defense, but uh, they have a small window of margin. And that's a very tough AFC North now. Because now the Bengals are yeah. in the mix. So now I have the Bengals as the 10th team in my power rankings, Greg. I mean, like, I, it's hard for me to believe, but I have the Bengals and the Browns as top 13 teams. Yeah, I have the Steelers as the worst team in the AFC North. I um, agree. We talk so much about the NFC West. The AFC North has become a, now look, I don't expect the Bengals to keep it up, but they are certainly not what everybody thought they were, which was a four win team about to get, you know, their coach fired. They've already matched last season's win total. They've already doubled two years ago's win total. And they have a good quarterback, a really good quarterback. Yep. So uh, that takes you. And he's a cocky kid who instills confidence in those around him. Bengals are Bengals are a threat. They're no pushover. They're they're a team that's going to be, you know, eight, and nine, seven and ten. But you don't want to play them. Who is that? The Bengals. Oh, that, that's not this year. No, I think that I think it is this no, year. No, no, no. I think you're undervaluing them. Oh, I think yeah, the Bengals. I think, I think the you, Bengals are a playoff you, team. Oh, come on! Yes, come on! I do. I think they're an eight, nine, nine win team. You don't want to eight, nine, seven, and ten team. You don't want to play. You think they're going to the playoffs no, I think, in the AFC? I I could name seven teams better than them off the top of my head. Right now they're playing well, but you got to look at who they beat. I mean, they beat they beat up on teams that are not going to the playoffs. Well, they, they, they took the Packers to overtime. So sure. Was, uh, was, what are they going to What are they going to do when they play the Ravens and the Browns? What are they going to do? I, I, I right. think they're going to. I think they're going to hold their own. I do. Okay. I, I think. Okay. Uh, I, I think they're going to hold their own. Which I, means I think, I think they're that they're going to win and lose. But they're going to lose too many. No, I, I don't think they're going to go. I don't think they're going to go one and three. I think they'll go two and two. Okay. Then 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 you're right. Yeah. Then, you, then you can talk about a playoff team. But I I mean. To me, they're the third best team in that division. Right now, I have them t- 10 because of you got to respect them on what they've done. Sure. But when when the schedule gets hard, I think they're the third best team in that division. And there's no shame in that. I think that's a step in the right direction for a young coach and a young quarterback. But asking them to be a playoffs team is skipping a step in the process. I think the only – the major question I have is that head coach. Is that I don't yeah. know – 
how good or, or bad their coaching is going to be when you do have to step up in competition and play in those big games. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. All we've seen are bad records and bad play as a history. We've seen a lot of losses in one in one possession games prior to this season. It's changing, and I'm willing to give Taylor the benefit of the doubt because it's changing. We've seen a lot of coaches in the history of the NFL that have started off really bad for the first few years because they've built teams from the ground up, and then they become good coaches. I'm not saying he's Bill Belichick. The point is, is that now he's got good talent around him. They've got a much better defense than people want to give them credit for. And they also have, as you mentioned, they have an elite level quarterback. They've got something that not many teams have, and he is just going to keep getting better. And they've got weapons at receiver. They've got a weapon in the backfield. They are definitely, in my mind, for real. But until they do knock off at least a good team or two along the way, there's still going to be questions. And I completely understand what you're, where you're coming from. Um, speaking of Cleveland and that division, so what a difference that Cleveland offense is when you take out a couple of their offensive linemen and then you don't run the football effectively. It doesn't even look like they attempted to run the football as much. (laughs) It was like, well, I mean, it, 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 Kareem I mean, Hunt would t- get like two yards and then to go pass, pass, and then to go back to Kareem Hunt and he'd get two yards and to go pass, pass. It's like they didn't just try to hammer the game in the running game like they always have because I felt they just didn't think they'd be successful with it. So I, I'm going to let Baker Mayfield beat us. And I just, I know he's got a shoulder injury, but he still, he just does mess. things that just. Aren't you fortunate that you have this great offensive line and running game? And if you didn't, I just don't think he'd be very good. Well, we got to mention Nick Chubb didn't play in the game. Sure. So it was Kareem Hunt as a lead back, which he hasn't been in five years. Um, I mean, uh, maybe two or three games last year when Chubb was hurt. But, you know, it certainly hasn't been. That's not his profile to be a 25 carry back. Uh, so they didn't have Chubb. So they went to... Hunt and then they they fell behind. I think they were losing the game, what twenty to nothing, something like that. Um, so yeah, I mean that, that then that running game goes away when you're down twenty to nothing. Baker Mayfield's hurt. Look, we were just talking about the Bengals, right? And I think when it's all said and done, the Bengals will be the third best team in the AFC North. But they have a chance because the Browns are in shambles. Baker Mayfield needs an MRI. He's saying today it's up to him if he plays. No, it's his decision. No one else gets to make that decision. Well, you know, I don't know if that's true, Baker. Like the coach and the trainers might tell you, you know, this this isn't wise for you. It isn't a one-game season. Baker Mayfield goes out and gets worse, hurt worse. Browns is over. Season's over. Forget it. And, you know, they were a, my Super Bowl pick. So uh, they're they're on the fringe. I'm counting on Stefanski. I'm counting on the talent on that team to write itself. But their season could very much end in the next two weeks if they do something stupid. I think what they should do is, and again, here is why you have a competent backup. They have something not a lot of teams have. A quarterback that you feel in one game can come out and help you win one game. That's Case Keenum. There's nothing wrong with Case Keenum as a one-game backup quarterback against the Denver Broncos on Thursday night. So you rest Baker Mayfield and you get him ready for the stretch after that, which you have back-to-back divisional games against Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. Get him healthy. And if if, if it is, if Baker says it's my decision, then that means it's like a pain-tolerant thing. And if it is a pain-tolerant thing, then you need a little rest. We're going to give you 10 more days of rest so it's not that painful for you when you come back in 10 days against the two divisional teams. We have to – everybody knows it in the NFL. Even though you only play eight games with – six games within your division, you win your division first. You do that, then you move on. The Bengal, the Browns have got to worry first about their division, not the Denver Broncos on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, no. Look, the Broncos are another team that's reeling, so I'm sure we'll get there. We should probably just go there right well, now. Well, I just want to – I wanted to talk about – might as well stick with Baltimore too because in that Charger game, you agree with me. You watched that game. The Chargers were like – I don't know if they could have beat a college team. 
That was just terrible. Yeah, it was, I, I'm just giving them a goose egg, basically. I'm just giving them a like a okay. buy, basically. So we agree, like, yes. I, like, that was unlike anything I've seen from them this yeah. year. I don't know if that was West Coast coming East Coast or whatever. I mean, I certainly didn't bother the Rams to come to the East yeah, Coast. Yeah, I don't think so. No, but yeah. I don't know if that was West Coast coming East Coast. It was just like, that was a very strange game. It was the fewest points the Chargers have scored in the uh, in the Justin Herbert era. Brandon Staley has been – we've applauded him on this show for being aggressive and, you know, unconventional. Well, when you're down 24 to 6, you can't go for it on your own 19-yard line in the third quarter. <laughs> uh, I told you, that, that guy's crazy, he, man. He just keeps going for it That's too much. I know. That's too I much. Know. That's analytics <laughs> on steroids. That's too much. Well, how did you feel uh, about so- Cleveland – Going for it, I don't know if you if you were watching the whole game, but they were down. It wasn't twenty to nothing at the time. I think it was they were down two scores, thirteen nothing. They had the ball like the fifteen. It's fourth and four. They're going for it. But it's kick a field goal. What's wrong? I always believe the the mantra of get points first. Once you've established those first three points, four points, seven seven points, three points. Then do whatever you want to do. But I always feel it's always best for your NFL team to score first. Get those points on the board before anything. Before you start doing crazy things yeah. like going for it on fourth and four at the 15 when you're down 13 nothing. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I don't know if you saw well, that, but that's something that I've started to see a lot more of today in the NFL is these crazy fourth and five go for it at the 15 when you can kick three three points. It's just crazy. Yeah, it depends on the score and the time in the game. But yeah, generally speaking, I would fourth and three down thirteen nothing in the second quarter. I would kick it. So, all right, but let's get to your Denver because uh, you know, to me, the number one problem has been has been Bridgewater. I've watched him in every one of these games, and everyone uh, since this losing streak, after the Jets, starting with Baltimore, and then the injury came after in that game. And, and he was terrible before the injury. He has not played well. I, his throws have been all over the place. He has not been accurate at all. And he is one of the major reasons in my mind why Denver has gone on this slide. Yeah, I don't think that's really a surprise, Greg. I mean, uh, look, it was a nice story when the Broncos were 3-0. and Teddy Bridgewater's a nice story with all, all he's been through to win a starting quarterback job again in the NFL. Uh, the Broncos were a paper tiger after beating the Giants, the Jets, and the Jaguars. Bridgewater kind of is what he is, a bottom 10 starting quarterback in the NFL. He's certainly not going to lift up a team uh, if they need, you know, a quarterback to win a game. Uh, It's not him. So this is why I was hesitant when you had them as a playoff team to start the season. I just didn't have a lot of faith in Teddy Bridgewater. The The Raiders are better than I thought. And they obviously, that was a tough spot for the Broncos, right? The Raiders were going to rally to yeah. quiet the noise. Uh, that was a tough spot for the Broncos to be in. But I can't say I'm surprised that uh, Teddy Bridgewater and the Broncos have kind of fallen back to earth. I am surprised a little in the Broncos defense. I thought the Broncos defense would give you a better effort. That's where I was coming from. I actually thought Bridgewater had the capability of being middle of the road, not bottom 10. I figured he could be, as long as he was middle of the road and that defense played well, I was giving them that chance. But a big loss, obviously, was Bradley Chubb. And they've had a few other injuries. And 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 when it's all really contingent, it's not like they have a plethora of pro bowlers on defense. Fangio is a mastermind. And he only needs chess piece here, there, and there. When you take out a couple of those big chess pieces, it's not so easy to be this mastermind. So I think that's been one of the bigger problems. And again, combined with the fact that Bridgewater has not played well at all. He has played like a a pretty below average quarterback for the past month. Uh, And then we'll find out on Thursday. Both teams are kind of reeling, Denver and the Browns. Uh, Also... What about the Jags getting their first win? Look, I'm not surprised by that. They're actually four and four in London, which that's surprising. <laughs> they should just move. They should just they should. move to London. Absolutely. Um, I'm not surprised by that. The Dolphins obviously were trending in a very alarming direction. 
I told you I thought the Jaguars, I was surprised they were on five. I didn't think they would be one of the worst teams in the NFL. I was surprised with their start. I think obviously what everything that's going on there with Urban Meyer, with the players, uh, the most interesting thing I thought about that game was two things. Somehow the Jaguars hadn't kicked a field goal all season yeah. until the fourth quarter of that game. That was remarkable to me. And then number two, it didn't look like when they won the game, usually you see a bunch of players swarm the coach, maybe dump Gatorade on the coach after a losing streak, like 20 games in a row for the Jaguars. It didn't seem – I saw Cam Robinson, the overpaid left tackle, hug Urban Meyer. But I didn't see a lot of players run over to Urban Meyer. And that maybe gave some credence in – my. you know, I might be reading too much into it. But that game maybe gave some credence into my mind that those guys really don't want Urban Meyer as their coach. I, to me, I was still on the boat of, well, you know, Urban Meyer's the coach. He's getting paid, at, you know, whatever, eight figures to be the coach. Yeah, you're – most of your team is, you know, other than Trevor Lawrence is dispensable. So you're got if you don't like the coach, you're going, not the coach. The watching that reaction, I started to maybe hinge the other way. Well, as far as the Jags and, and what you feel their overall record, let's say how good they'll be by the end of the year. I think let's keep in mind for the Jags and the Jets specifically, because of their rookie quarterbacks and their first time coaches, staff and all. It's, I don't think it's about what they're doing now. I think it's how good will they be by the time the season's over? Will the Jags and the, the Jets case. have five wins each? Or will they have two wins each? I think that's the case for the Jets. I think the Jaguars is its very own situation because, because of who the coach is. A prolific winner with very short So you expected temper. more from the Jags and the Jets because of Urban Meyer? I. I definitely did, yeah. And now that they're struggling, I expect less of them because I he could quit any day. Mm -hmm. We don't know how long he's in it for. So I, I give him yeah, credit, I, though. I, I'm sure he had something to do with it. Everybody in the world, or most people, especially because the the uh, the analysts who never think out of the box, even though that's their job, uh, were thinking Jags were throwing a hail mary on that final play. Oh, I, that was brilliant. Yeah. I thought I agreed with you. And, I totally agree and that that to me is the difference between Urban Meyer because yeah, I agree with you, yeah. but here's what I don't understand. The play before that, I think ended with 18 seconds left and he let it run down to five seconds to call timeout, which I guess is why everybody thought he was like, maybe that was part of some master plan to if there's only five seconds left, everybody's going to assume we're throwing a Hail Mary, so they're going to drop off. <laughs> but he almost ran out of time. Yeah, I mean, I let's call it what it is. He, had, he let 13 seconds run off the clock, and he left himself one second. I mean, okay, if that guy's not touched down, if the Dolphins are smart, they don't touch the guy down, and maybe the clock runs out. I would have liked to see him call the timeout maybe with seven seconds left. We're assuming here he if, knew what if, he was if, doing the If whole that's time. the case, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe call the timeout with seven seconds left. People are still going to think you're throwing a hell. I'd be interested to check out his post uh, game press conference and hopefully a writer asked him that question. So I'll have to check that out and see, uh, see what we find out. Uh, the other overtime game was a thriller. And that was Dallas and New England. And Evan Lazar and I uh, are recording the Pats Probe Show today in about 45 minutes. So finally, I have a, a, an exciting game to talk about with Evan. Because the Tampa Bay game was close, but it wasn't exciting. It was boring. This was a thriller. And it was just, to me, might have been the best game of the NFL this season. How it went back and forth at the end of that game. And a couple of things we found out. First of all, from the Cowboys. They're for real now. They got a big win on the road against a quality coach team when their backs were against the wall late. They did a lot of things that they hadn't been able to do in the past. Wasn't against the Packers. Wasn't against, you know, the Buffalo Bills. But it's a step in the right direction. Uh, for the Patriots, once again, I just think they've got the right quarterback for their system. It's going to take a little bit of time. But Mac Jones is going gonna, is gonna to get it done. And I, I, they've got a good future there with Mac Jones. I'll credit Mina Kimes from ESPN for this because she's the one who brought it to my attention. And then I looked into it. Bill Belichick's not really trusting Mac Jones yet. Like there are some times where they're around midfield and he is a playing it a little too conservative. Uh, I get it. It's a rookie quarterback. 
It's the first time he's had a rookie quarterback since, you know, whatever, 2000. Uh, but I would like to see Bill Belichick maybe trust Mac Jones a little bit more. I mean, I think we know this season isn't going anywhere. Let's see what the what the rookie quarterback, let's speed up his process. Let's see what he can do in those, uh, you know, 45-yard line, fourth downs. Can he make the big play? Um, I, I, you don't think of Bill Belichick as a conservative coach. It's actually When I saw she said that, I was like, that can't be right. But no, she's spot on. The, the Belichick's been coaching a little conservatively, uh, which a lot of coaches do with a rookie quarterback. I just didn't expect that to be a storyline around Bill Belichick. Well, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago, Evan and I. And one of the things we connected the dots with, uh, especially me because Evan's younger, just like you. You guys are younger, younger than me. Uh, but the first couple of years when Bill Belichick was there with Tom Brady, he was extremely conservative. That's the way he played. He he didn't go for it on fourth down at the goal line. or. But he's one of the people responsible for making conservative football coaching like a thing of the past. Uh, but so, but uh, yes, but that's not how we started out. And maybe that's what yeah. he's doing. He's going back to when I had young old Tom Brady and I was a defensive coach. We were going to win close games and we were going to win with our special teams and I wasn't going to put my team in a bad position making, you know, crazy calls. That's the only thing that I could think of of why he's being conservative again. I'm just going to go back to how I coach Tom Brady and and it worked then and I'm going to do the same thing with Mac Jones. So, it's the only yeah. thing I could think of. Um but anyway, big win for Dallas. Uh, because uh, right now it is clearly all Dallas in the NFC East. Yeah, I mean that that division's over. Uh, I want to see Tri- I want to see Trevon Diggs on offense. That's what I want to see. I breakout see- breakout oh. candidate, defensive uh, player of the year for for the first six seven, games. Seven intercept seven interceptions, an interception in six straight games, two touchdowns. Can we get this guy at receiver for a couple plays yeah. like the old Deion Sanders? I want to. This guy is electric with the ball in his hands. Woo! Uh, no, I love it. Um, I think he's fun to watch. Uh, I've seen him now in person because I was in Dallas for the Giants game. Unbelievable ball skills. Uh, Dak Prescott, no, no signs whatsoever of the injury from no. last year, though. Now he has the right calf strain, which is worth monitoring. Uh, good time for the Cowboys by from what I gather from talking to medical people who know right calf strains, he should probably be okay uh, in two weeks. And uh, look, the Cowboys defense, I said it last week, I'll say it again. When you're a turnover driven defense, it's a risky proposition because those can dry up at any moment. But right now they're riding the high. And I mean, they look like, I don't know, probably the third best team in the NFC. That's what I would say right now. Behind. If you're asking me right now, I would say the Cardinals, Packers, the Packers, and then I would put the Cowboys right there with the Rams, Rams with the Rams and the Bucks. I probably put the Cowboys right there with the. Yeah, okay, I see where you're coming from. I still have them fifth, but I, I could I could see where you're coming from. There's a very fine line before the between those five teams. I think it's Cardinals one, Packers two, and then three, four, yes. five, or jump them however you want. And what's and and maybe they won't need the turnovers as much when they get Dexter Lawrence back. Dex, I mean, Demarcus, uh, Demarcus, Demarcus Lawrence. Lawrence back. They, you right. know, that'll help yeah. them out tremendously when they get their best defensive player back. So maybe yeah. they won't need to rely on the turnovers as much. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Because Washington again, just looks like, okay, I don't, you know, the defense is just not anywhere near what everybody expected. The Eagles are the Eagles and the giants are the giants. Uh, it's getting pretty ugly. Uh, giant fans must be, pretty irate at this point yeah i mean they're ap- they're either apathetic or irate uh i don't know which is worse uh you know that's that's just is it is what it is uh they are the lost cause they're gonna fire the gm they're gonna have to make a decision on the coach and the quarterback what do you it's think just- about the coach I think you can't change coaches every two years they gave McAdoo two years they gave Shermer two years you can't I, I you think he you think he deserves more time. I think he's I don't I I haven't been impressed with him on Sundays. 
I am impressed with him the other six days of the year plus the offseason. So I would give him more time. Now, look, I don't I'm certainly not going to sit up here and say he's the answer, sure. but I certainly I, I don't think you pull the trigger with him as fast. as It was very clear to me that Pat Shermer, the job was too big for Pat Shermer, who I think is a great play caller. Uh, but the job was too big for him. I don't think the job is too big for Joe Judge, so I think you got to let him grow into it. I know for a fact the Giants kind of regret not letting Ben McAdoo grow into the job, so I don't know that you can uh, can another first-time young head coach. And the quarterback. The quarterback, I, I, I mean, look, I, I, I've been impressed with him so far this season. He had four turnovers on Sunday. I give that I put almost no blame on him for that. The Giants offensive line was, you know, you know the turnstiles. Yeah. Uh, they played without Barkley, without Tony, without Galladay. Uh, look, I mean, Daniel, all these quarterbacks, even the great ones, if they have no protection, they're playing hot potato. Get the Baker ball Mayfield. out of my hand. Get the ball hand out of my hand as quickly as possible. Uh, so, I, I mean, look. Would you like Daniel Jones to have better ball security? Sure. But it's very clear he has zero faith in his receivers to get open and it, like as currently constituted with the injuries and in his offensive line to protect him. So he's going to get rid of the ball as quickly as possible. And an aggressive defense like the Rams is going to jump routes. It's really that simple. I, I talked about throwing out a game for the Chargers. I'm going to throw out that game for Daniel Jones. And, and, and here's the other thing, too, is when you spend – a top five pick on a running back. That player is obviously then going to be the focal point of your offense. And he has not been there uh, except mm -hmm. one game against the saints this year since his rookie season. So talk about Saquon. Yeah. So the offense revolves around Saquon and he hasn't been there at, again, saints game only since his rookie season. And no, he had a thousand yards his second year. I mean, if people forget, he had a pretty good second year. Uh, but he, I mean, it is what it is now. He has missed 18 games yeah. in the last three seasons. I mean, that's too it's many. It's really actually that's pretty the, quick as far as his career is kind of going pretty fast all of a sudden. You can't even, what is this, yeah. year five? Four. Four, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, he's, and, and you it, know he's not going to do anything this year because he's just, he's, he's it's his injury you know, second, you know, it's his right. first year back from injury. So it's, it's just a wash until next year. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I mean, I agree with you now, but I thought after the saints game, I said, okay, he looks like himself. He's about to take yeah. off. And then, and then he rolled his ankle and you know, it is what it is. Yep. Uh, okay. So then uh, uh, Packers, they get the, uh, the win over the bears. I actually was impressed with fields. There is just no, I mean, look, it's his team now and it, and it deserves to be, uh, and I, if I'm a Bears fan, I feel pretty good. I think they've got their quarterback. They just need to, like every team that has a young quarterback that's rebuilding, they just have to make sure that they surround him with some good players. I said it uh, before the season began, and um, and uh, I even uh, re it reflected that on my fantasy teams that I, I felt that uh, Khalil Herbert was a nice little late-round pick for them. And so even though Montgomery went down, I don't think they miss a whole lot because I think Herbert's going to be a good running back in this league, but they have to, you know, this is a team that hasn't built a good offensive line in forever. And, but for an organization that hasn't had a quarterback, like a real franchise quarterback, like ever, it's, it's, a, I think they've got one. Uh, yeah, I'm not so sure I'm ready to go there. Yeah. I think the world is higher on, uh, fields than I am. Uh, but look, I think I think they're going to do to the him what the Giants did to Jones, what the Jets did to Darnold. They're going to take his rookie year, which is you know, prom more promising than not, and they're going to fire his coach and they're going to fire his offensive coordinator. And basically, they're going to say your first year is a wash. Go learn a new system. In which case, your second year becomes your first year. It's just a situation I don't really like. I don't. I wouldn't have my GM and my coach draft a quarterback when they're on the hot seat. Like it just, it just, yeah. It sets, it screws up all the timing. It screwed up Darnold. It screwed up Jones. Uh, it's, you know, look. I mean, but they I mean, did it. I'll flip. I mean, look. I guess it's worked for other guys. I guess it worked for Mayfield. It's working for Justin Herbert. 
I think it doesn't work more than it works. So uh, I think that's probably where we're headed. Uh, the Bears were what, an 8-8 eight eight team last year that snuck into the, se- the playoffs? That's probably what they are again. I agree. And to me, if I'm, if I'm Bears fans or I'm the Bears owner, that's not good enough. But you're not, and we're not, and the fans are not. And the, every the, that's if if that was the case, he wouldn't have, he, the GM would have been out this off season. So would have Nagy. But if they go back and even show that they're a 500 team, which I think they're going to, or maybe they're the seventh team in the playoffs again, then I don't see how the owner is going to get rid of them now. So I, I just think this is it. I think and look, I, I don't want to sit there and uh, there's no question that Nagy and Pace, especially Pace has had their, their, their opportunities. But if Nagy can actually get the Bears back to the playoffs somehow, I don't care how he does it, I'm, I'm willing to give him I'm, – I'm willing to say there's a lot – I've seen a lot worse coaches. Let's just put it that way. And maybe now, even though it didn't work with Trubisky, maybe this can work with Fields. So we'll see. And look, I'm not trying to sit there and tell you that I like Fields the way that a lot of these other analysts like him. Because I know they go goo goo and gaga for some of these guys like Fields. I'm not there yet, but I just think that he's got talent. And I think if he can be surrounded with that talent, I think he has an opportunity to be a good quarterback. I don't know if he can be elite, but I know he could be good. Let's talk now about the the the, the other crazy overtime game because you brought up his name, and that was Sam Darnold and the Panthers and the Vikings. And you asked me this question a few weeks ago when Darnold got off to the great start and (laughs) whether or not I had changed my mind. And I told you, no, I did not. And (laughs) this is why. Yeah, you want to give him credit for making those throws late to get the team in overtime. Okay, fine. He had a fourth and whatever, big throw down the middle, Big throw to get them into the into the into the end zone later, eventually, and they almost stole the game. But man, once again, if you take out Christian, it's this is not a coincidence that with McCaffrey out of the game, ever since then, Sam Darnold looks like the old Sam Darnold. And he doesn't have a good offensive line. His offensive line is not much better than what he's dealt with with the Jets. The difference no, that's is definitely true. Yeah. The difference is he doesn't have Christian McCaffrey in the backfield. When he doesn't have that, he reverts back to the old Sam Darnold. And it's it's just this is going to be a big decision for Carolina if this does not change. If he plays good, then he plays bad, then he plays good, then he plays bad. What do you do? Do you give him – is he your quarterback again in 2022? Or do you have to try to find a quarterback? I mean, they have a, they also have this decision with – I mean, it's not really a decision, but – Christian McCaffrey, man, he talk about you want to hammer Saquon for not staying healthy. Sa- Christian McCaffrey already got the big contract and can't stay healthy, and uh, they mismanaged that situation. There's no two ways about it. Uh, they to put him in on IR after he already missed, uh, you know, two games is. Uh, uh, they thought he'd be back sooner, but I, I always laugh, uh, Greg, when Pete Carroll said it about Russell Wilson. Joe Judge says it about some of his guys. Like he's an all time healer. He's a quick healer. I mean, we get it. People's bodies don't all heal the same way. Christian McCaffrey is a slow healer. He is a slow healer. Uh, look, I mean, they're, they go as he goes. Uh, you're right. The, I mean, you're asking me now with 11 games left, I would say upgrade the offensive line and see if you could get more good than bad out of Sam Darnold. Cause you gave up a lot to get Sam Darnold. Yeah. So I, I agree. That's uh, that, that I would do that first. Uh, because they've already been, you know, they go after, because look, they could have drafted a quarterback. They made the decision. Correct. The Jets decided we don't want Darnold. We want a new quarterback. Carolina said, we'll take Sam Darnold. We're not going to go after an, one of these quarterbacks. And then they drafted J.C. Horn. And then they tripled down on cornerbacks by trading for C.J. Henderson and Stephen Gilmore. Yes. So it does appear that, Okay, maybe we fix the offensive line in the offseason and we should be okay. If Christian McCaffrey is healthy, then we should be okay. And I agree. I think that's the way they're going to go because I think that's the way they have to go because, they, like you said, they have kind of already played that hand. Because if you're not going to draft one of the quarterbacks in the 2021 draft, 
why would you draft one in the 2022 draft when right now I think you're looking at Sam Howell and maybe Pickett from Pittsburgh? And those guys, you know, Howell, I think, has got first-round talent. I don't know how much first-round talent Pickett has yet. But you're forgetting the you're forgetting the Liberty kid who everybody loves. Yeah, the, to me, I don't know. I'm not if I want to go Willis. I don't want to know if I want to go that far. I know when when I'm willing to wait and see how that plays out. I've seen him throw the football and I don't see it. Um, but anyway, fact is, this is not the same quarterback class. So if you didn't do it in 2021, you're not doing it next year. Uh, and, and, and is it a surprise that Christian McCaffrey has been a slow healer and has been banged up when you see how small he is? He is a small dude. But Saquon Barkley, you were just saying the same thing about Saquon Barkley, and he is a big dude. Agreed. So, that's, uh, yeah. that's the one thing when— If anybody could figure out injuries, they'd, make a, they'd be a zillionaire. When, when I talked about Christian McCaffrey in his draft year, I remember telling Dan Shanka, I think Christian McCaffrey talent-wise is the best player in the draft. But the reason why he's not going to get drafted that way, two reasons. One, he's a running back. And two, he's just, he's not built, he's not big enough. It's like you yeah. knew, so, sort of like a quarterback, it's like Kyler Murray. What's great about Kyler Murray is, is you, uh, you notice every time before he's about to get hit, he goes down. He even goes down. He knows how to go down and not take a hit. He's really good at avoiding contact. But running backs can't do that. <laughs> That's, I mean, he's a big guy, unlike Kyler Murray, but that was Eli Manning. That was Eli Manning. He, he, the reason he made 210 consecutive starts is because anytime anybody breathed on him, he crumbled in the pocket <laughs> yeah. like, oh, you're not going to hurt me. Yeah, I know. So. That was, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and by the way, for Minnesota, I was watching that game, and as bad as Sam Darnold was looking, I just couldn't believe Minnesota had let Carolina put them back in overtime. I like, how can you do this? Carolina was playing so poorly in the game, and but Minnesota survived. And and once again, Joseph, with a chance to win the game in overtime, misses the field goal, but they went ahead. I mean, that guy, it's like 50-50 proposition with him. Maybe he'll yeah. miss one, and maybe he'll make a 53-yarder to send you to overtime. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's I don't know if that's the way you want to live life as a field goal kicker, uh, but it is what it is. Other than that... Uh, you know, Tampa Bay uh, won again and uh, life is the way it is uh, being a Tampa Bay fan and, and being spoiled to have Tom Brady. I just, you know, Bruce Arians is a really good football coach, but, you know, I just wonder how much does he have a big enough ego or does he does he realize how lucky he is? That no, how I, I gather from from you know, people who know Bruce Arians, he's not a big ego guy. So I think he's well aware of that. And, and, you know, some people believe you pay your dues long enough. He was an assistant for a long time. He only got a chance to be a head coach because his buddy Chuck Pagano got sick. So he, he paid his dues and, I you know, karma gets rewarded. He's, a, by all accounts, an excellent guy. So, yeah, I think he's uh, a really good football coach, unfortunately. But, you know, you can't win championships without the quarterbacks. So, yeah. He's, uh, so, yeah, I think he realizes he stepped in some sh some uh, doo-doo there. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and because look, yeah. he's going for it there yeah. at midfield on fourth down. It's like, why are you doing that? All you gotta do is punt the ball, and and you gotta. I mean, Eagles don't have like this offense that should be able to score on you like that. But it's like, ah, I got Tom Brady. I gotta go for it, you know. And they didn't yep. get it, but they still wound up winning the football game. So, you know, what would you think of the taunting penalty at the end of the Eagles game? Which one was that? By who? Uh, uh, I forget one of the linebackers on the Eagles got a taunting penalty on Fournette, and uh, it was really questionable. Was that the and one like that, in the beginning of the last drive? Yeah, okay. and uh, and basically the Eagles never got the ball back because of that. Yeah, I mean, I, I just I don't really I think they're again I think with officials the thing that annoys me the most is they don't they have to stop thing robotically. And mm -hmm. understand the situation. Yeah, and not enough I, of them uh, do that. I will say I didn't really have a problem. I know the NFL world was up in arms about it. The ones I have a problem with are like if a team is celebrating together, like guys. But when you get in another guy's face, like the Eagles guy got in Fournette's face, I really don't have a problem with it. To me, that's textbook taunting. Whether you agree that it should be 
a rule or not, if you want to take make it not a rule, that's fine. But by the letter of the law, getting in a guy's face like that is taunting him. So I don't really have a problem with the call. And we've seen a lot of those. So I know the one that really I can't stand, not taunting, but is the college football targeting rule. It's like oh. that drives me nuts that these like really impact players, you know, with a split second. And the way it goes, yeah. I mean, they have to change the rule a little bit. Like, I get why they're trying to do it, especially for college athletes. I'm all for Correct. that. But once again, yeah. go under the look at it and say, oh, it was yeah. don't just be like, oh, wait, that's it. If you target, you're out. No, it's, there's got to be a little wiggle room for these officials you to want. not penalize them, not only for that game, but for no. the half the next week. Correct. Uh, officials in all levels of football, they've tried to make the rules so they take the nuance out and make it as uh, as cut and dry as possible, and they've ended up doing the opposite. All right, before we go, just quickly take a look at the uh, impact games for Week 7. We already talked Denver-Cleveland coming up on Thursday. Seattle, that New Orleans game, by the way, is on Monday night football. And then the Sunday night game is a big game for both teams, the Colts and the Niners. Because uh, both of those teams are trying to salvage their season. I'll tell you right now, if I'm the Niners, I have seen enough of Trey Lance. I think they should play him. And I know that's not the direction he's going to go. But I think after the, what I saw in the Arizona game, I think Trey Lance, I think this should be his team now. Because he is going to take over anyway. So you're not 5-1. and one. You're not like you were a couple of years ago when you were running away with the, the playoffs. You're not going anywhere with Jimmy Garoppolo like you did a couple of years ago. So just let Trey Lance play. Yeah, Meh, that's interesting. He's back in practice. Uh, so he's back in practice. So I guess we'll see how it goes. And then uh, Tampa Bay has Chicago taking a look at big games this week. Uh, Cincinnati, Baltimore. And Kansas City and Tennessee is a big one. Yeah, Kansas City and Tennessee is a big one. A rematch of an AFC championship game a few years ago. Uh, look, Kansas City, we keep saying it's early, it's early, it's early, but it's not that early anymore. Can, if Kansas City is going to be the one seed, they got to rip off six wins oh, in a row at happening. some point. Yeah, not the way they're playing. But it could. They've got the talent, but yep. not so far. And I'll be look, I was working like I do. I don't glue myself to every single game on Game Pass. I work while I watch. I could not. I, I knew I, I was in the third quarter of that Kansas City Washington game. I swear, to, I, I thought Washington was. I think at the point it was like thirteen ten Washington. I think something mm -hmm. like that. I thought they were up twenty four to ten. I thought that yeah. game was like because Kansas City looked so bad, and they kept turning the ball over. And I just could not believe that that was actually that close. And then once Kansas City made a couple of plays, the game was over. So. Yep. They're just lucky they played a, a you know a, a pretty below average team, or else they would have lost again. Yep. So I kind of yep. like Tennessee right now. I know it's only Tuesday, but the way the Chiefs are playing, I I, I expect Tennessee to pick up where they left off last night. So, mm -hmm. all right, Ryan, appreciate it. You working on anything, or are you just still following those New York Giants? Uh, I'm working on a really interesting story. I just don't want to give it away just yet, okay. but I am. Working on a really interesting story for Post Sports Plus, our uh, subscription site. So uh, hopefully it'll draw some people in because I think it uh, has larger than Giants appeal. So well, good. Good for you to preoccupy your brain with more than New York Giant football. So <laughs> you need that. All right, Ryan, we'll talk yeah. to you again next week as we recap week seven in the NFL. We'll get your picks later in the week. And I appreciate, I appreciate your time as always. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Greg.